Welcome to a special edition of Momentum Monday. Today is Sunday, uh, August 25th. Why is it special? We do these every week. I don't know. Futures down 1%. Friday market was down about 3%. So it's kind of... That's 4%. Momentum, according to math. Momentum according in, to in turmoil, you know, in a way. Yeah, I said it. I, I, I said it Friday. I said this is the first time I believe. I, I felt December, I... I I, I felt like, you know, we were at much lower levels to start from. And I felt like that was a kind of a self-created, easy to end, you know, the whole walkout, uh, lockout, whatever. Uh, this this is a little more complicated. So I actually feel we are, and then you had the G7 coming up. So I actually feel we are literally at a, at a market turmoil. So let's pull up the market. All right, let, let me just pull up my charts. And can you see my charts? This is Marcus Smith, uh, the S&P 500. I can't. You're not seeing my charts? No. All right, let me check again. What about now? See, I have my ugly face. You should be able to see my charts now, right? We can see your charts, Ivan. All right, finally. Um, okay, so real quick, futures down 1%, as you can see, the Russell 2000 testing its momentum lows from early August. The large caps are holding a little bit better, but it seems like the, the S&P at least will test its 200 day, which is around, around 280. So I think that that's a really important uh, psychological level that the bulls will try to um, defend. Because if we lose it, I think there is a good possibility that we test 260. Uh, which, which the June lows? Which no, last no, no, no. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where we're going. I'm trying not to think about. it. I'm going to look at individual stocks today. I think we have like really crazy. Uh, the way I'm looking at it is we have really crazy rhetoric. We've gone kind of nowhere. Listen, if you own the right stocks, we've done it right. But the Fang stocks have gone nowhere now for a year and a half. Uh, the bank stocks are weak. All right, um, let, let's take a look at the Fang stocks then. They're kind of. I mean, the S&P has gone nowhere for for the past year. If uh, more than a year we're looking yeah. at almost a year and a half um we have amazon in, having issues to the 200 day i mean that that's that's a big level flat 200 days so i'm just going i'm just going when I, like this could all be good right like again like th there's periods of time two years is nothing you know if you're holding for 40 years so you know i don't want to you know i'm i'm not sounding to, like get out of the market i'm i the market is if we go back to the S&P chart, I mean, let's just go back. So let me give you some context, how I'm looking at it. Because you're looking at it from a much shorter term perspective. Uh, if we go into the daily. I don't know, are we really slow today, Ivan? I don't know. Uh, everything is uh, normal here on this side. Huh. Okay. You can see this last month. And seasonally, like we've been talking about, the July, August, September, you know, back to school, summer ending. These are these are typically choppier, weaker months of the year. Uh, people talk about the fall being bad, but I think things it's pre-fall. Historically, these are these are pretty soft months, and there's good reason for that, right? Like uh, if you if your kids are going back to school, summer ending. Uh, lots of other stuff going on more important than the market and it's a pretty moody time you know uh, I personally hate the end of summer now what we've had the last year is this trade talk right you, you, you've handed the economy to a couple crazies handling China whether you like it or not they 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 want us they 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 think China's tip and taking advantage of the U.S. right or wrong. I'm not going to over my pay grade, and the markets are starting to scream about it. You can look at the look at the volatility. We've had a bunch of three percent moves in the last month. Markets don't just do that, and they're doing that 
because they're trying to get the attention of uh, the children. And, 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 and the markets are the parents. And uh, the uh, president at this point happens to be the child. And, you know, what worries me is, not, you know, we're in no man's land here. It's just, it's just a range. But what worries me is the markets are starting to scream, and that's the volatility. And Trump is flip-flopping. He can call it whatever he wants, but it's no trade war. It's trade war. It's no tariffs. It's tariffs. Uh, China has their own plan. We don't really know. Everybody says they think they know, but they don't know. And so now we're at an inflection point, right? Where volatility either is going to increase or subside. And where markets, when you come out of these periods of volatility, when we start trending again, and, and, and if we're going to start trending down, this will be a great point to pay attention and to honor your losses. But if we're going to, if everybody's going to come to their senses and the economy is going to continue on growing and we, we get a settlement on these tariffs, which I don't think is going to happen, uh, then, then the trend resumes up. So, you know, I don't think we, we know quite yet, but my gut tingly feelings are that I can't predict what, like, it just doesn't, like, there's no way of predicting what this White House will do. And the rhetoric is so crazy that I'm erring on the cautious side. I don't think I need to, you know, bet my ear when the, when the rhetoric's this high. So now we can go to some individual stocks. And, yes, and we can go to individual stocks, but then... Keep in mind that when volatility spikes, cor correlations rise. So the correlations rise, but a lot of stocks have held in there very well. There are still stocks that are holding well above their 50 day, but you know that if the S&P loses 280, they all look the same, basically. I mean, that's what that's my opinion. And not just my opinion. Yeah. That's what historically happens. Uh, this is China FXI. The large cap China index, they're at, I think, at inflection point, very, very important level here, which, uh, I mean, if they lose that level here, 30, 37, 36, we might see a, like a quick down, quick uh, sell off. The relative strength is so weak. I, I uh, again, China is going to spin this for their, they, they're run a lot differently than the U.S. They now have a scapegoat in the U.S. And he's a president for life. I, I don't like our chances winning a rhetoric and economic battle with China. Uh, I don't think we were doing so bad. You know, I'll throw in my two cents. You know, manufacturing means nothing to me. We ha China has a digital wall. We're letting them uh, get educated here. Uh, we're, we're sending them back home. They have a digital wall to build their tech companies. Uh, they don't have to face competition from Facebook and Google. Uh, so we're fighting a manufacturing battle in a digital era. That's, you know, I, you know, I'm sorry for the people that are in the manufacturing business. Uh, it's not going to come back to the United States. Millennials are never going to get into manufacturing. Uh, maybe robots will do that, but I don't know how that solves problems that this administration wants to solve. Our problem is a digital wall. It's an unfair playing field. I fully agree that we should be tough on China around their digital practices, uh, but that's not where this battle is headed. We're fighting our own digital companies here and we're letting the Chinese win the digital war at home without competition. That's like a double negative. So I don't understand it. That's why I'm leaning towards being extra cautious here. But again, I hope I'm wrong. I don't mind paying higher prices as a trend follower. Yeah. Like right now, it feels like uh, other than a few stocks, there's just not that much risk to take. All the stocks that I like should be going higher based on the growth and the numbers, and they're not. And I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, let's 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 go through a few examples. Sure. Uh, um, I, I look at Twitter, for example. I think they've reported some good numbers and it just can't seem to get going. If we were in a better market, this would have already run higher. And it just, so I think if the market turns, the stock should get through 45 and, and go higher, but it just can't get through the base. Um, can you go through some failed breakouts that you've seen, Ivan? 
Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, sentiment is what matters in a short term perspective. And, you know, when sentiment is. Uh, well, Twitter is the ultimate sentiment. Yeah. When to, sentiment to is right? low, we'll see a lot of, of those earnings breakout failing. I mean, this yeah. is very typical the, uh, the past few weeks. We have yeah. a, a big gap and then a pullback to the 20 day. And then it, and in a boom, in a normal bull market, this is a great swing entry, at least. Or even long position trade sometimes. Yeah. But as you can see, it's not yeah, holding. Another one that I liked was Teradyn, TER. But again, semiconductors, right? And yeah. perfect breakout. Earnings, big numbers, TER, which yeah. I'm long in. And, you know, just that is, you know, sometimes they just don't work. That That pattern will lead to higher prices in a good market almost 100% of the time. Uh, you know, the volume, massive gap break. Instead, it's like struggling. Uh, Match.com, exactly. same thing, TCH. You know, huge gap breakout. Again, you start, you know, this could be exhaustion too, right? This is not like this is the first breakout for this. This stock was 20 Many bucks a while. Yes, it's not the first one. But, it's, but surprised on the upside and it's held in there okay, but I'm saying no continuation. Yeah. Uh, this is one that seems to be working though, Ivan Key. Well, it had a big breakout on Thursday and it's giving it back on, on Friday. So we'll see next, early next week. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is but very again, typical. They, this, they, is, this is a tough market. Uh, Intuit had a big breakout on earnings and kind of just let's see if it held the gains. No, it just closed near the lows. But of Did course, on, on Friday, yeah, look at it. We closed here. <laughs> Yeah, I saw it and, and Salesforce, same thing, had big numbers, but it always does. It had, it had not been acting well and had a huge gap up and then kind of closed at the lows. So again, like, um, I just do not like the pin action. Now, this could all change, but at the same time, the longer Trump messes with the mood and the sentiment, you know, calling for China, us to stop doing business with China after a week ago, taking a call from Tim Cook and saying, this is the stuff that bothers me. It's like, all right, whether he had a call with Tim Cook, he's talking about his call with Tim Cook and how important, you know, Tim Cook said, you know, if they don't have the tariff, Samsung's going to have, you know what I mean? Like why sandbag the country and trade, you know, why you're going to exhaust people. So you get people tiptoeing back into Apple thinking the, the coast is clear. Uh, Apple, you know, we know what the what the pain point is. And I don't know if he's getting at this point. I don't know if he's getting his jollies from from doing this. And if he's getting his jollies from doing this, what's going to happen is the market is much bigger than the president thinks. And uh, we could get ourselves smacked. So that's why, again, I got to err on the conservative side here. What's your take on gold? Do you still don't care or? I your take on gold? No, I think that Bitcoin is the interesting place still. I mean, gold is 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 definitely working. But if gold is working and commodities are working, that's not what gets me excited about investing in the stock market. If I got to go to the stock market and make my money in gold, uh, you know, listen, I'm I'm happy for the people on gold, but that's just not good for enough people. That makes no a non cash flowing item carrying the market leadership uh, does not interest me. So uh, congrats to the gold bulls, but that's just not good if there's no leadership with it. Listen, if gold goes up and technology stocks go up, great. But yeah, and, and, and listen, relatively gold, not not that sexy and not that big a market. For not, not enough people can play in that market. I think the Bitcoin market is interesting because we'll see how much chaos really affects this market. It's been very volatile, digesting uh, the big gains earlier in the year. Big swings between ten and twelve thousand. Um, it's having a big move tonight, back up to ten five, ten thousand five hundred. You know, I, I. So again, I, I'm I'm more watching this because it's the software digital version of of gold. That's the it's the new. It's the millennial gold and uh, is much more scalable and much more interesting and kind of just 
it's already had a huge move this year. And so I'm interested to see above 12,000, but right now in no man's land. A um, couple other stocks that were interesting. Shopify hit, you know, past Etsy and uh, past eBay this this week, Ivan, on in valuation. So the only e-commerce company, you know, it, you know, remaining in its sites is uh, is Amazon, uh, which is you know 20, 20, 40, 20, 20, 20 times bigger still, you know, fifteen to twenty times bigger. So uh, on a contextual level. Um, two stocks going in the complete opposite direction. I feel if you if you put those two up against each other over the last year, uh, I don't know if we can here. If we can on Coifin, but I don't know if we can here. I mean, this is a tale of two uh, e-commerce companies, and uh, obviously I'm long both of them, but uh, really happy with the uh, Shopify. But even Shopify reversed on uh, Friday. Yeah, you want to pull those up, Ivan, against each other? Yeah, yeah, I am. I don't know. For some reason, it's uh, loading slow. So let's see. Um... Yeah, we'll take our time. What did you do this weekend? Anything fun? Uh, I played some volleyball today. And yesterday, my sister had a birthday. So she's visiting. So we... Ah, it's a Bulgarian her. duo. Yeah. What did you do? Did you guys... Did you get her a Tinder date? No, we played some tennis, uh, went to La Jolla, we just went to different places. Um, okay, so how do we compare here? Amazon... Just add, just add Shopify and then add security down there on the left. Yeah. See the little add security, yep. And that's weird. See the add security button there on the left side, lower left? Yeah, yeah that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, as you can see, both of them. But uh, can, let's see one here. Be against each other. I'll have to ask. Uh, they, they, sh yeah. I don't know. They should not be on the same scale here, right? They should. They should be a percentage scale, not a dollar scale. But yeah, we just launched a new uh, charts. That could be a bug. Okay, good find there. But anyways, moving in opposite directions uh, over the last year. Um, you know, I think that it's almost tripled this year. Um, and obviously, a lot of large numbers, but the platform focus on just uh, helping people create stores uh, and, and selling services uh, and uh, the network effects of Shopify have really, you know, been the tail of this year. I think... Uh, I mean, Amazon looks not vulnerable. I'm so super bullish on Amazon, but from a technical perspective, there's, we're in no man's land here. And I don't see the saving grace. You know, Bezos is out uh, enjoying his life as a single man and um, doesn't seem to uh, be too stressed. And the stock has been digesting massive gains. And so again, you know, when the leaders, when the fangs aren't leading, I mean, now, like, like go back to the S&P, I mean, I think what's great about the S&P is, you know, no leadership from the banks. If we, if we can end here, no leadership from the banks, I have no leadership from uh, the FANG stocks. And I think if you had told people that, you know, 18 months ago, you wouldn't think the S&P would be 6% from all time highs. So, so again, it's, you know, uh, and that could be just rates at zero, um, you know, the tax cuts, um, pretty good, you know, wage increases, you know, let's be honest, you know, if you work at McDonald's or Walmart, your wages have gone up, which is a good thing. And McDonald's and Walmart are at all time highs on that news. So there's a lot of good things, which is why the shame of the rhetoric, uh, is a bummer. And so, you know, there's nothing really to be too concerned about yet, but I think the markets are starting to send their message with this volatility and we'll see. Anything you're specifically looking at, Ivan? Well, I think the, the two most likely scenarios in, in a short-term perspective, short-term meaning the next few weeks, is either we have another quick leg lower or we remain in a range, which means 
if you're a swing trader, you need to play the ranges, not chase breakouts or breakdowns for that matter. Just try to play the ranges. For, for example, Twitter, if it pulls back to four, even to 39 here near the 50 day, you know, you can try to play that range 39 to 43, kind of, uh, unless the market falls apart. If it falls apart, you know, obviously you need to be either in cash or short. Uh, when volatility spikes, the trading environment is great for intraday traders and the people with other time frames need to be kind of more patient and more cautious. And if you have long term positions, it, I think it, it just you need to be hedged in some way in this market. Either yeah, the good investors are just so good in these high volatility. They have so much equipment. There's so you know so many advantages in high volatility that uh, it's a good point, Ivan. It's just for the average investor, they just got to stand aside here and either raise some more cash or just really understand what a twenty percent pullback, if that happens, would do to their portfolio. You know, it's not fun to do the math and figure that out, but you really want to figure out how you would, you know, if, if Apple's at one sixty again, how do you feel? If Facebook's at one forty again, how do you feel? If Amazon's at thirteen hundred, how do you feel? And if you if you don't you don't want to take that pain, you should take these this moment to lighten up, because uh, if the market cracks, you could easily get those prices again. Yeah, exactly. And uh, keep in mind that some individual stocks, you know, when they drop fifty percent or more, some of them might never come back. Like today at volleyball, I talked to a guy who told me he owns a bunch of. Uh, Marijuana related stocks and you know, he's been yeah, killed that's a bear market. and some of those names are not going to come back. Uh, no, nope. so they don't have growth. You need to have an exit strategy <laughs> when you own individual stocks. Yeah. And, and I said, like, there was a point there in Canopy that we're looking at where you know, the bulls at $40 were like, okay, if it holds here, it holds here. And here we go. Six months later, stocks at 25. You know, you didn't take the signal, you know, when it hit 38, you got to be very disciplined when the markets are in these iffy areas. Uh, when the volatility subsides and markets trend, investing becomes easier. It's not, you know, it's not that you're smarter. It's just we're looking for periods when it's easier to sit back. And unfortunately, in high volatility times, the market's speaking and you have to reposition. Um, now, you don't have to reposition, but you better be prepared then for, for big moves after if you own the wrong stocks. And so, yeah, that, that, that's a good example on marijuana. I think marijuana is, is really going to have a lot of supply here uh, of stocks. There's just a lot of bad companies. And uh, you really have to understand the industry now to, you know, there's the momentum's completely gone, and now it's just, you know, distributed to like uh, shareholders who don't know what the hell is going on at these companies. They don't remember why they own them. And you could have relentless selling for months. I think the coming out of this weed bear market is going to be very interesting uh, in the next year as the U.S. starts picking this stuff up. But I don't know the sector well enough mm -hmm. to start picking away at these. But yes, uh, the fact that this kid that you're playing volleyball with is upset. He probably doesn't know what the hell he bought. He doesn't know why he bought it. And now he's, you know, a bag holder as they call him. So I uh, hope that hopefully that helps everybody. Um, uh, if you're a market wisdom member, hit us up. Uh, if you have questions and I'll, I'll post this for everybody. Have a great week, Ivan. You too, Howard.